Welcome back and happy Monday. So I think I figured out why everyone at SA Live is always so happy. Because they eat a lot of sugar? That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sugar. Mm, it's cold though. Mm. <laughs> this is not real sugary. It is just pure mango, mango nada, and it is from El Chango Loco. And Stephanie Martinez is here. This is the award-winning mango nada. It was um, it was our award-winning mango nada, uh, number one in San Antonio. Wow, I'd say it's number one in Texas as well. So we're gonna tell you about some of the other great treats that they have here to keep cool, and you dress them up with all sorts of goodies. Even if you want to bring your own. They're going to get that all spiced up in style. All right, another place to keep cool is a place for your pets, and that's where Fiona is. Hey, Fiona. Hey there, we're here at Pup Pup Fun Away, and Stephanie Garza and her fabulous pup, Rishi, are showing off the trick. But we are going to be talking about ways to keep your pets safe in the heat, including mistakes you might be making that think are helping. And Jen is going to take us to a place where I guess you could say uh, what's old is new again. The Gray Moss Inn, new owners, and boy, do they have some good-looking food and good-looking drinks right there. All right, you want to decorate a cake like the pros? This place has everything you need so you can start to decorate and classes to teach you how to do this. It is for all ages, and I would say I'm the one that made the uh, Barbie cookie, but I did not. Also, Mad Science Monday. Hey, we're going by the law, the law of gravity here. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Stick around. Welcome back. We are officially up to 97 degrees. So there is no doubt, no doubt that we'll hit 100 today. The question will be, will we get the record of 103? That was set back in 1948. It's certainly possible. And we may be at record heat, record levels next couple of days. 103, 104, the norm this week, guys. Suggestion, mm. you should put those records in red. Okay, I'll work on that. Yeah, uh, my graphic arts, you know. It's throwing I, you off a little bit. <laughs> we don't, we need to see those records in red because that's yeah. how we feel about them. That's fair. We'll curtail yeah. it to Ursula's needs next time. All right, that is it for the news at noon. Thank you so much for starting your Monday with us. It's been a pleasure. I'm honored. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Okay, right now, what are we doing? We're going to SA Live. Right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. You know, if you look long enough at that, that little, oh, little bit of heaven right there, that'll make you forget all about any record high temperatures. Oh my goodness gracious, it looks like an award. Here, thank you. Very, that's getting cold on your hand, isn't it, Dad? I know, but that's what it's all about. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday. I'm Mike Osterhage. Fiona is back today but not here in the studio. We're gonna to talk to her in just a second. All right, yeah, you wanna beat the heat? We're talking about record high temperatures and oh my goodness gracious, it's a, a million degrees outside, but you'll forget all about it. Thanks to El Chango Loco, you've got some sweet icy treats. And Stephanie Martinez is the co-owner. You are everybody's best friend this time of year, right? Yes. Okay, what do we have? I was gonna show mine, but what do we have here? So um, this is the mangonada con fruta. We were voted number one in San Antonio for best mangonada with this Italian ice. Uh, we wanted something to represent Chango Loco, so we wanted to um, put the freshest fruit on there. Mm -hmm. So we have our cucumbers, our watermelon, our mango, and you could go ahead and start dressing it up right here. Okay, and so the other thing is too, when I was tasting this, and I better taste it again just to make sure. <laughs> mm, that is so good. Not only nice and cold and refreshing, but it's nothing but, what? Water? Uh, uh, ma real mango fruit, um, water, and sugar. So it's, it really is just real mango fruit in there. Oh, okay. And then you're going to top it off with the watermelon, our cucumbers, and our mango. Okay. And then um, if you like the sour, you're going to go ahead and drizzle it with mm -hmm. the chamoy and lucas on there. So I have to like win, <laughs> win the crown so I can do it up like that? I, it's, uh, it have to be voted on whether this is worthy of it? <laughs> It just, it's the taste that matters, right? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's the taste, taste that matters. So what was it like to be voted number one? Because there's a lot of these around here and yes. San Antonio loves their mangonadas yes. and all the chamoy and everything. Well, it feels good because um, there is a lot of uh, snack shops out there, right? But um, it all depends. We wanted something to represent Chango Loco, so it was um, the classic mango nada with the fresh fruit on top and then the chamoy and lucas is what makes it like stand out more. Oh, that's really good with that tang on there? Yes. That'll 
And that'll get you puckered up. All right, what's <laughs> next here? Because this looks very refreshing. Okay, so next we have our chango split with hot Cheetos. Um, this is actually one of our oldest items um, when we first started in the ice cream truck. Mm -hmm. So um, we just upgraded it over the years, and you can go ahead and top it off with some gummy bears. I can put all this stuff on here too? Yes. Oh, so wow. you could choose your own toppings like gummy bears, gummy worms, chamoy belt. So you just got a whole that. kind of buffet of sweets yeah, we have, there. Yes, and, and you just pick little, and choose. A yeah. little bit of that, a little bit of this, and some gummies on there, and then we're all set. And of course, you got to put some, some of this on there. Yeah. Okay. You, huh? have, you have to put chamoy and lucas on everything. Oh, okay. That, that's just stand, that's standard. <laughs> Required. Okay. Standard operating <laughs> yeah. procedure here. So um, how long have you guys been in business? Um, so we've been uh, in business for over eight years, but we started off in an ice cream truck, um, me and my business partner. Mm -hmm. And so then this was actually the first items that we had on there, and um, it's still one of the most popular items on our menu. And it's funny, you'd think cucumbers and, and hot Cheetos and... What do you think? Put all those flavors together, it is absolutely delicious. <laughs> the next one, as I'm talking about mouthful, I apologize. Okay, this is like, this create, what all goes together here? This okay. is like a puzzle. Yeah, so this is the vaso, uh, chanco vaso, right? So it comes in three separate compartments. Um, we're gonna start off with the bottom right here. This is the classic mango loco plate. It comes with watermelon, mango, gummy bears, and gummy worms. All right. And then you're gonna go ahead and drizzle it with some chamoy and lucas oh, on there. Forgot that. You have to add the chamoy and lucas to everything, oh, right? Okay, that goes so on there. That. And then we cover that up. Yeah, we're gonna cover it with the with this jug right here. This one right here, you're gonna add um, any of your favorite al frescas. We have 14 different flavors at our location. We have dragon fruit, watermelon, banana. And that's not gonna mush the fruit underneath No, there? it won't mush it. Okay, and then, if that's not enough. If that's not enough, you're gonna top it off um, with our mango preparado, right? So this is um, has a variety of different, of the Mexican treats, like the mango, cucumbers, Japanese nuts, peanuts, and then you're gonna top it off with the chamoy and oh, lucas on there. Forgot about chamoy, yes. there we go, right on top of Don't there. Don't forget no, the okay. chamoy and lucas. And so, the whole point is trying to sip this, yes. eat that, and then how do I get to the bottom here? Well, you're gonna have to take it off. <laughs> we'll take it off like that. Okay. There we go. All right. And then you'll grab and a then mango. I get, oh, yes. and then I get to eat the, the mango with? Yes, with the gummy bear or gummy worm. Ah, uh -huh. Now, you also, if somebody wants to bring your own adult beverage, you're gonna kind of dress it up a little yeah, bit, right? So not only do we have our frescas, you could bring your alcoholic beverage or your favorite non-alcoholic beverage and we will dress it up for you with our chamoy paste that we make um, at Chango Loco. We have three different flavors. We have watermelon, tamarindo, and mango. And then you could top it off with your favorite dulce enchilados. We have like Gushers, um, gushers Starbursts, and Skittles. And uh, you have a deal for viewers, buy two candied apples and get a third one free? Yes, yeah, so what you can do with that is, well, we could slice up the candy apples for you and put chamoy and lucas, of course. Chamoy and lucas? Or you could just um, take them whole and just like take it to go in a to-go box. Once together. again, where are you located? Uh, we're located in the south side, um, 1909 Pleasanton Road. All right, for more information on La Chango Loco, head over to SALive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code. Thank you so much, Stephanie, delicious. And I feel a million degrees cooler right now. All right. It is National Mutt Day, and I guess I would be the mutt to Fiona's purebred. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's out there right now. So we decided to have a question for you. Dogs or cats? What do you say, Fiona? Uh, well, you guys know I have two dogs, including my 85-pound, emotionally fragile, Jiberian <laughs> Chepsky. You know, so I would go dogs. <laughs> Um, normally, I would agree with you, what but it's you? funny, I, I kind of lean, we have a dog and a cat, and the cat's the one that wants to jump up in your lap and cuddle, and the dog is just going, uh, 90 to nothing. So, we want to know, what do you pick, dogs or cats, one or the other? Also, you got to send in some of those pictures of all your little babies as well. Okay, I suppose where you are, the vote would be unanimous, right? Unanimous for dogs. We are here at Pup Pup and Away training with Stephanie Garza, certified dog trainer and canine behaviorist. Not myself training, but of course her fabulous pup here, Rishi, who is showing off some some tricks, some some games, games, <laughs> some a little bit of everything. Okay, and of course this is your dog, Rishi, right? Yes. Okay. And how long have you been training Rishi? Uh, Rishi's ever since she came to me. She came to me when she was four months old, and she's now five and a half years old. Oh, 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 okay, you've like graduated and gotten a master's then, <laughs> okay? So it is extremely hot, okay, to say the least. Um, how can 
pet owners keep their dogs safe from the heat? I think just planning ahead, knowing what your dog is all about, how much activity they need, and especially if it's something that needs to be outdoors, doing it early in the morning, late at night, plan ahead. Okay, so do you, what do you recommend for safe dogs who uh, get easily bored or large dogs in small spaces, you know, that can't really do a lot of exercise inside. Yeah, so a couple of things that we like to use are some food puzzle toys. I'll see if Rishi will play with one, although this is her most favorite <laughs> toy, so I may have ruined her. So this is a snuffle mat. You can toss oh, some treats in here, even that. their meal, and that can have her forage for that for just a bit. Um, we also like this guy. It's heavily weighted on the bottom, so when they play with this one, they have to bop that around for the food to come out. And of course, your dogs do like to have to, you know, like food and like treats and be will willing and motivated to work with these, but food puzzle toys can be a great addition to that. So if you are training your dogs in the summer, kind of the same thing, early morning or indoors, right? Yes, think about it. Uh, what about recipes uh, for dogs in the summer? Yeah, so a couple things that I like to always use, have something on hand like a, a frozen bone. This has marrow inside, it's got some good meat on that. They come straight out of the freezer, you can freeze that. And then using things like licky mats or silicone molds to put stuff. So you can always, this is some ro uh, frozen goat's milk that's really great with probiotics. You can stick that on there. Um, a couple things that I like to do, silicone mold, put a spoonful of yogurt, a little blueberry, some bone broth on top, put that in the freezer. Now your puppy has a little popsicle. Um, this guy, you can stick some pumpkin, which is great for some fiber, put that on there. Once again, freeze it. Freezing everything makes it last longer, and then it's a great pop school to cool your dogs down at the end of the day. Okay, and Rishi's got a few more tricks to show off, right? Yeah, sure, Rishi, let's see what we can do. I don't know, once again, now that I got the flirt pull out, that's her most, <laughs> that's her most favorite. Spin. Good girl. You I hope do? my dogs are watching from Rishi. home. Rishi, Rishi, oh my God, come here. Go hoop. Yes, good girl. Nice job. All right, and you just became a certified canine nutritionist. Um, tell us a little bit about that and what that means. Yeah, so canine nutrition, it's all about feeding our dogs really well, just like eating good, healthy food is really important for us. A lot of people don't think that human food is great for them, but it can add a lot of really great nutrients into their diet for lots of different benefits. So making sure that we're giving our dogs a variety of food, because sometimes kibble does miss a lot unexpectedly right. <laughs> from their from their from their nutrient dense all right stephanie garza from pup up and away now coming up in just a bit and a little later in the show we are going to be talking a little more about what signs to look for as far as if your dog is overheated and mistakes you might be making that you think are helping all right for more information of course on pup up and away just head to our website mike Thank you very much. Yeah, head to the website. Don't forget to see in that QR code as well. All right, talk to you in a minute, Fiona. So ahead on SA Live, it's a Mad Science Monday. We're staying centered with a fun experiment involving gravity. Yeah, it's all about the law. And the Grey Moss Inn has been a staple for more than 80 years. Now it's revamped, reopened, and they're serving up new recipes. We take you inside. Stick around. Welcome back to SA Live. Oh, doesn't that look delicious? Well, the Great Moss Inn has been a staple in Gray Forest near Lotus for gosh, 80, 90 years. I remember having dinner there a couple of decades ago. Well, uh, after COVID, it ended up closing. However, two sisters have now taken over as new owners with new recipes and the same legacy. And Jen Tobias Strusky takes us there for a little taste. That's right, Mike. Wow, it is such a pleasure to be here today. Now, the Grey Moss Inn has a lot of history, but it's revamped now with a new menu. And I'm so excited to be here today with one of the owners, Martha Valadez. Hi, Martha. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. And we are going to start with the food here. Let's start with the queso. Look how beautiful that is. The queso flameado is one of our most popular, and people love it that we light it up and they get to see that come to their table like that. And the food is described, I noticed, it's northern Mexican. So you brought quite the spread today. Yes. Let's talk about some of the items here. Yes, for sure. Uh, we have some appetizers here, some of our most popular. Like I said, the queso flameado, for sure, it's one mm. of them. These are the Ignacios, mm -hmm. which is a long word for nachos. It's <laughs> our version of them. Uh, we have the shrimp crostinis. This is the most popular, uh, the, our uh, ribeye uh, appetizer. 
And of course, anything with ribeye is going to be delicious. So it's ribeye with the guac, and this is all. Uh -huh. Chicharron all. de ribeye is oh, the name of it. Yes. So good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, our traditional fajitas, mm -hmm. and we have some other traditional dishes like chile rellenos. Mm -hmm. Our milanesa is made with filet mignon. Milanesa is a traditional Mexican mm -hmm. dish. What's, mm -hmm. What we make it a little bit different is that we make it with filet mignon because it's normally one steak, mm -hmm. uh, but we make it with filet mignon. That's why they're more like tenderloins. But Got it. tender being the key word. <laughs> tender, yes, delicious. Um, more traditional dishes, like I was saying, the chile rellenos. We've got some enchiladas de mole, enchiladas suizas. Uh, we've got some ribeye tacos, also a very popular that looks dish. Yes, amazing. Yes. Wow. With the the beans, because uh, I did get to try some of those. Can you tell me about that? Because that recipe, whoa, so the, good. The borracho <laughs> beans. Yes. yes. Those are traditional. Who doesn't Who doesn't love the borracho yes. beans, right? Yes. yes it has, uh, of course, beans mm -hmm. and uh, pico de gallo, uh, bacon, some wieners, and uh -huh. so it's a, it's a nice mixture and a little bit of spice. Yes, it they takes have, me back. They have, they have to be a little bit picosos. Yes. A little bit cool, so, and it takes you back to my childhood with the little, you know, everything in there, so it's so good. Okay, and then breakfast as well on the weekends, right? Yes, breakfast, we serve breakfast on the weekends. Uh, so we've got the chilaquiles, also a popular dish, also the green so chilaquiles. Good. Yes. Uh, huevos divorciados, which has two types of salsas. Mm -hmm. The desayuno gray moss with pancakes. Who doesn't love pancakes? No matter where you're from, right? Like yeah, it, that's I, beautiful. I know, those are awesome. Uh, and then uh, the huevos rancheros. The huevos mancheros, okay, amazing. Everything looks so good. And this is obviously a new menu from what the Grey Moss, it goes way back to the 1920s here in Grey Forest. So you and your sister decided to take it over. Why, why did you guys want to do that? Well, we have a background in catering. We've had a catering company for many, many years. And then we decided to expand. And we knew about this property for many years because we live in the area. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a beautiful property. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it had been closed down for uh, several years. It closed down during the pandemic. And we just really wanted to take up the mantle and reopen it. It was a huge project, but we decided to take it on. Yes, and keeping the name was important as well, right? Just because of that legacy? Yeah, for sure. I mm -hmm. mean, the Grey Moss Inn, who, who that has lived here for a long time doesn't recognize the name. Yes. Uh, yeah, for sure, we wanted to keep the name. Even though it's a little different for a Mexican restaurant, but people have responded well to it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you've been open since June, right? We opened in June, that's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so people can still come visit, and you have happy hour, which we're going to get to in the second half of the show to show off, because it's not just the food, right? Uh, it's also of course, got to have good margaritas. <laughs> if you're gonna have a Mexican restaurant yes. for sure. The delicious drinks, there's also outdoor seating and then a second seating area as well. So just a beautiful place to escape a beautiful property. For more information, you can head to salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code on your screen. Still ahead on SA Live, tips for taking care of your pups in this heat. Plus, this cake shop has baking lessons and supplies for everyone and look at what they can teach you how to make. That's coming up. Welcome back to SA Live. Yeah, I'd love a cold beer right now, but how about a nice slice of cake? Yeah, believe it or not, that is cake. Eating cake is easy. Decorating something like that to where people are going, that is cake? You've got to be kidding me. And just being blown away by looking at it, that is what you can learn to do from this lady right here, Monique Herrera, <laughs> owner of Cake Cards, here to show us what the baking classes all involve. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, I still can't believe that this is all edible and all made out of cake. Everything you see here is all edible. Okay, classes, and this is what you teach, not only decorating like that, but cake decorating. So yes. how do I start here? So you're just gonna pipe a border all the way around the edge. Whoop. There you go. Okay. What's the trick to decorating a cake? Uh, practice, patience, okay, <laughs> and having fun, most importantly. This is kind of soothing, though, to do this. Yeah. Okay. So I got that, and I'll put a little bit in the middle right to hold middle. it up, and then you're going to do that. We're going to put one more on top, and then you're going to take some of these. And just start and Just start something. decorating all over the top. So is there any right way or wrong way? You've got to look at what the tip is, right? Right. And see what's going on here. So. What do I do? Am I just, just going to? the same thing you were doing. We'll start around the edge and then we'll work our way in. Like that? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Or okay. you can do like a little circle and make the ro make a rose. Okay. Mm. Here, I'll, maybe I'll make a rose right here. Yeah. So who are your classes for? So Anyone? our classes are for people of all ages, from children um, 
up until experts yeah. in cake, uh, we have something for everybody. All right. How long does it take to learn how to make something like all the little faces there and stuff? Most, most of our classes are about four hours long. Okay. Uh, but we're always learning, so there's still things that even I don't know how to do. And when you're done with the class, you'll be able to do something like that? Yes. Okay. And it not only looks good, it tastes good as well. And then the other thing, too, is not only knowing the technique, but having the right stuff. And that's what you have here. All of the, like, the professional. Everything that you see here, we now offer in our store. We have all the supplies. Everything that you see here is the same stuff we use to make all of our custom cakes and cookies. So, like the fondant, which is yes. the basically the Play-Doh of cake making, that's right? That's right. That's what you make all of that stuff out of. Yes. You and we carry it in various sizes from two pounds up until 20, 20 pounds. 20 pounds of fondant? Yeah. That's a lot of fondant. Well, if you're a, <laughs> a pro, we go through a 20 pound bucket at least one, once a week. Oh, really? Yes. So you can just like, just go nuts with that stuff and yeah. do all the little doodads and whatever. Yes. Anything you don't there. know how to use, we are there to help you and show you how to use anything. This I was told is a squiggle? Yes. Okay, so I go like this and go. Just go back and forth. There you go. Look at that. So in less than five minutes, I'm learning how to do a cake like this. Okay, and what, you do custom cakes, what's the most unusual thing you think you've ever done? Uh, the most unusual cake I'm gonna say is probably the sports ball cake that we did a couple of months ago. And so it had a basketball and then it had a football on top of that. And then on top of that, it had a baseball, all just kind of balanced on top of each other. Okay, how did you get started in, in decorating? like this oh geez i went to culinary school here at st phillips mm -hmm. that's where i started and then i just worked at different bakeries throughout the years um, but our teacher is actually uh, she was on the food network so she's been on various food network shows so oh, you really? are learning from an actual pro who's oh okay been through it all <laughs> wonderful i would well how's that it looks perfect maybe just put a couple of sprinkles on oh, it sprinkles. Like, yeah uh, what flavor will do that? <laughs> there we go. Oh, look. I could take that for my wife's birthday and do that for her. So how do folks sign up for some of your classes? So all of our classes are listed on our website. It's cakeartsa.com. You can fill out a little questionnaire and we will call you to get all your information. And one of the cool things too is there are even edible magic markers. <laughs> and look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like more information, and this would be a great, I mean, family thing, if you want to get together with the kids and make a birthday cake for mom or something like Absolutely. that, decorate it, why not head on over there? If you'd like more information on cake art and their baking lessons, head over to essaylive.com, click on the Asking on Essay Live tab. We provide a link, scan that QR code, or you can just pick up some of this stuff and just Experiment on your own at home, right? Absolutely, every day, and we're there to help you in case you don't know how to use any of it. Thank you very much, appreciate it. All right, coming up on SA Live, well, the old Grey Moss Inn is now the Grey Moss Inn Cochina Mexicana. We are checking out new, the new menu and all the flavorful cocktails as well. And next on SA Live, well, we are here at Pup Up and Away, and we are going to be showing you ways to keep your dogs cooler in this extreme summer heat. Welcome back to SA Live here in beautiful historic Market Square on this sunny and hot day out there and protecting yourself from the heat is extremely important as well as protecting your pets your dogs from the heat and fiona is at a local pet care place that has some tips to take care of your pet this summer so fiona have you learned any new tricks there <laughs> me Mike but these pups are and I'm joined with Stephanie Garza we're here at Pup Pup and Away and with the extreme heat these are just a few ways to help your dogs stay cool yes. right because it is important to keep them protected from the heat what are some of the ways to keep them from being overheated I think we talked a little bit before about making sure that your exercise plan is going to be timed nicely for throughout the day um, and also making sure that your dog your dog may not lo love water not may not be able to do something like this, but having a variety of different ideas, try to keep them inside is gonna be the biggest tip there. Yes, and I'm noticing, of course, this is an easy 
easy way to keep your pet's pool is just picking up an inexpensive, you know, like little pool that you can find, you know, at Walmart or other stores. And it's keeping their paws cool, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's where they sweat. Right. right. Yeah. So a lot of people like to wear booties and I do love the idea of booties, especially if you can't do any walks morning or evening. Right. Booties are great. However, you do want to make sure that they're going to be nice and ventilated. A lot of booties are going to be more of rubber and they do allow some sort of evaporative cooling throughout that booty. So I like my favorite brand is Rough Wear. Okay. And what are some mistakes that people might make when they think they're helping their pet in the heat? Yes. My biggest two. Number one, don't shave your puppy, especially if you got something like a husky, right? We often think that we want to get the hair off to allow them to breathe, but this does leave them open to things like sunburns, as well as think about a koozie, right? You put a koozie on your can to keep it cool because you want to protect it from the outdoor elements. Same thing with that fur. It's going to allow for them to have some sort of in insulation and not overheat. So make sure you don't shave. The other thing is ice cubes and water. When, if you do think that your dog is having some sort of heat symptoms, heat stroke symptoms, heat exhaustion, you want to go for a slow cool. You don't want to cool them down too fast. So as much as we want to stick ice cubes and water in that moment, to cool them down quickly. We want to go more for room temperature water, hose water, things like that, not ice cold water. And you mentioned symptoms. What are those symptoms in dogs? Yes, of course, we're going to look for some heavy breathing, right? Some heavy panting. You might see your dog get a little bit lethargic. They might not want to stand up as easily. Maybe they're doing some staggered movements. But of course, a lot of dogs will try to go to the very end and, you know, they might not be showing those symptoms really well. So my favorite thing to look for is just look at the color of their gums and their tongues. Typically, you like to see a nice pink color. So if you're seeing something that looks a little bit more red, that means that their body is pushing the blood all the way to the top, trying to cool that body down as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay. And any other products that folks can utilize to help keep their pets cool? Yeah. Once again, if you can't, if you can't stay out from the outdoors, I definitely like cooling pads. That's something easy that you can buy from Amazon. You have a few different kinds. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. So definitely having something like that and then teaching your dog to like laying on that. I think we know that sometimes when our dogs comes in, you know, they want to lay on that stone floor stone and cool tile, off. Anything, anything yes. that's cool, they just flop over. So yeah. this can bring the stone tile outside without it being a stone tile. Okay. <laughs> and of course, this, this, what's the name of this? This, this is right Rocky. Here. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. Look into the camera, Rocky. Okay. I swear <laughs> you have Mike Osterhage's eyes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they are that beautiful, beautiful ice blue Rocky. Okay, Mike, if, yeah, if he was a dog, yeah. That would be Mike. It would be Rocky right there. All right, well, for more information, of course, on Pup, Pup, and Away, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com. Mike, and, did and you Rocky's see Rocky's eyes? I did. I wish mine were that ice blue, but Rocky's also got some of my gray they hair, are. too. So we're basically <laughs> twins. I mean, yeah. Great tips, though. He loves the camera, too. Love the camera. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. Hey, still ahead. So what exactly is the balancing point and how do you find it? We're getting experimental on this Mad Science Monday. And what pairs nicely with authentic Mexican food? Hello, margaritas, of course. Jen Tobias Trusky is shaking things up at the revamp Gray Moss Inn in Gray Forest. So stay with us. OK, and we we're talking about dogs. Dogs versus cats. Wow. Two to one right now. We got a bunch of dog lovers out there. But speaking of beautiful eyes, look at that cat. Gorgeous. You still have time to vote. Welcome back to SA Lab. Well, earlier, Jen showed us some of the authentic Northern Mexico dishes, Mexican dishes that they have at the revamped Gray Moss Inn. And now, as you can see, she's got something to wash it down. Hey, Jen. Yes, Mike, we are back out here at the Gray Moss Inn. Again, just reopened in June this summer with the revamped menu. So it's Northern Mexican food, but that includes all the delicious cocktails. Martha Valadez joins me again, one of the owners here. All right, Martha, we moved to the bar now, so let's talk about the drinks you have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you're gonna have a Mexican restaurant, you gotta have some good margaritas, right? Yes. This is our standard house margarita, uh, on the rocks, of course. We have uh, our mango chamoy margarita. Mm, that's and, always a favorite, right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then with the tamarindo sticks, that's, that's mm. awesome. Uh, right here we have also a flight of margaritas. If you can decide, well then just have them all, right? Yeah, uh, You've that. got uh, strawberry, let me see if I can remember, apple, mango, and just a house margarita. Beautiful. Uh, They're yeah. so cute. <laughs> I know, right? If you can decide, just have them yes. all. Yes. Uh, we have El Azul here, beautiful drink. Mm -hmm. uh, a masi colada. 
That one with is kiwi. really catching my attention with, yeah, the, with kiwi. the kiwi. It looks yeah. so refreshing. And a uh, good old fashioned, old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, good old fashioned, old fashioned. You can't go wrong with that, right? And you have happy hour now too, so you can get some drinks and then some of the appetizers we see here too. Yeah, we do. We have happy hour starting from Tuesday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Okay, oh, 4 okay. to 6 p.m. Okay. Now, we're going to see Alex because he's the guy behind the bar here when you come Absolutely. in. And he, what is he about to make for us? He's going to make for us a margarita that's named after the original owner, Mary Howell, the Mary Howell Margarita. Let's talk a little bit about Mary Howell. Really. Yeah, so. yeah, Mary Howell was the original owner that opened this restaurant in 1929. So we decided to name something uh, after her. So this is a, the piña colada, the drink that's made after her. I'm sorry, the margarita made after her. Uh -huh. uh, and it has a prickly pear flavoring. Mm. Uh, and it has some jalapenos in there to give it a little extra kick. Oh, I love that. And I love how you guys are preserving the story, right, behind yeah, yeah. the it's, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, it's so much history. We really wanted to do that. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. I see the jalapenos in some of the little seeds, so it'll have a little kick, right? It's going to have a little kick, yes, for sure. And people may not even realize, but you also have live music on the weekends, we, we right? We do, mm -hmm. we do. We have mu live music on uh, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays in the evenings mm -hmm. out in the patio. Uh, and it's a little bit mixture of everything, a little bit of jazz, of course, some Latin music. Uh -huh. And they were very good at playing stuff on request, too. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Oh, it looks amazing. Okay, so this one has a kick. I'm going to give this a try. And then for those who have never been, can you let our viewers know where you're located? Yes, for sure. We're on Scenic Loop, 19010 Scenic Loop mm -hmm. in the city of Gray Forest. So good. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, so again, there's happy hour. They have breakfast on the weekends. Uh, we serve breakfast from 8 in the morning until 2 p.m. So if you get a late start, that's okay. We're serving breakfast until 2 p.m. Okay, close on Mondays. Close on Mondays, and then uh, Tuesday through Fridays, we open at 4 for the evening and all day Saturday and Sunday. There you go. You know everything you need to know. Now, you just need to come and try the amazing food and meet the beautiful sisters behind the restaurant. Thank you so much, Martha, and to your family for putting this all together for us. Please come check it out. The legacy continues with the new menu, and it will not disappoint, okay? I got to go for something else. I think I'm going to grab this kiwi drink and send it back to you, Mike. What do you think? You have an invitation, by the way, to come visit, right, Martha? Absolutely. So come we'll visit, to Mike. See y'all soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Coming up on SA Live, we've got fun experiments for the kids this summer, and it's all about gravity. Live. We always try to keep things light, but today things might get a little heavy because we're talking about gravity. Andrea Cook, Director of Programming from Mad Science of Austin and San Antonio is here with some summer fun experiments. Yes, Andrea, what's our first one? <laughs> I love a good science <laughs> pun. Okay. <laughs> so center of gravity, this is something we deal with all the time. Mm. Um, not just older scientists like me, but you want to find like the balancing point. That's what junior scientists will say. Okay. So for example, I'm going to give you a challenge right off the bat. Okay. I have these carriage bolts right here. And I already I, learned something new. Carriage bolts. <laughs> I just need for you to um, find the center of gravity so they will all stay on top of this one. All of them? Yes, I believe in you. You do? So the thing is, you want gravity to be pulling on each side equally. So it help, help me. It helps if you, <laughs> if you have a pattern okay, to a start pattern. with. Yeah. So, like, so you can put one down, uh -huh. and then you're going to alternate, like putting it on top, like one pointing towards me, one pointing towards you, and just keep that pattern going. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to save one, reach with my T-Rex arm. You better save that one because oh, I'll never get it. I'm on it. Oh, we're on it. Okay. We're on a hill. Okay. Okay. So where do they keep? We're okay, adding this excitement. Table is, is the table is the table top level. Like we're just finding out now. This okay. Is, yeah. All right. Here we go. And Ta -da. here we go. Now this one goes on top. Okay. Like a sandwich. You got ah. one. Do you, would you like to do the honors? Oh my gosh. Squeeze. Pick them up. Squeeze. And put them on here, but do not let go until you you feel as if they are balanced. You found the center of gravity, also known as the center of mass. <gasps> Did you see my hands shaking? I was so nervous. <laughs> I'll clap for you. Oh! Everybody else is busy. Okay. Where'd it go? Oh, look at that. Super so cool. This is like that restaurant trick, right? With the fork and the knife and the, yeah. what is it? You know, and the salt shaker. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> it is exactly like that for real. Yes. Now okay. we're going to go to basic level. Okay. okay. Um, so I have some balancing Eagles okay. all around the table. Okay. And I, Ted already set up this one. He did a very nice job. So we oh. have the beak is the balancing point, right? You can have those or the, the cardboard. Okay. And the idea is the wings, are the same size, same shape, right? You can do more than one. It's okay. And if you got the tail, what if you took the tail off the tail feathers? Would it be balanced? No. No way. You, you got to have that going on. Can you balance one on, on this eraser from our mad science color changing pencils? Like on the same? Ooh, almost took it. Where? Oh, friend. Right. Like this. Oh, no way. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can do this with things around the house. Um, start off with something basic, pencil, ruler, and then give the children um, non-fragile, non-breakable items Hi. of different shapes. Hello. Hello, yes, look at that. We also have the Mad Science um, Pyramid, that, that one's over there. Uh -huh. And we have different shapes, and it's a good challenge for the kids' critical thinking, like where do you think the center of ah, gravity, gravity is. is, right? Okay. You could do any of them. And then, hold on. Yeah, go for it. The eagle is awesome. The cardboard eagle, there you go. Ta -da! So I like to start off with kids with a spoon, I mean a ruler, and then a go ruler. to a spoon because okay. that spoon that, you know, the good part has the good stuff is yes. going to be a little bit heavier. So you have to change. Now, balloons. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't believe you, this is still up. I'm, I'm not even nice. breathing near it. Okay. <laughs> so in the balloon, of course, there's gas. And then I have put a little, this sounds weird, a surprise inside. Just a little bit of um, clay. Gas and surprise. <laughs> so it, it's like... Wobble ball. You feel that? Yeah. You hear it? Uh -huh. Now, when you throw it or toss it, the center of gravity is going to be off. Like, yep. Okay. It's okay. Yep. Knock things over. Okay. So, this is a good outside game, indoor game. It depends on how you're. Oh, look at us. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Professional. Okay. <laughs> now um, we have, we can't let it touch the floor, Andrea. <laughs> We're going to be here all day. <laughs> okay. So, that just the clay inside or the. Um, Play-Doh just uh -huh. changes the center of gravity, so it's a little bit of extra fun, you know, a little exciting what? center of gravity stuff. Yeah. Do you want to pull out a bolt and see what happens to your bolt action? Okay. Let's see. Well, it's probably all... Whoa! Yep. You went for it. There we go. You said it! Pull a bolt! <laughs> I know. I thought it was going to be like a little... No, I was going to grab one of the ones I know is going to yes. knock it all over. So, of course, you go to events, schools, parties, everything. Right? All the things. And we have summer camps going on, too. So mm -hmm. birthday parties, special events, like big assembly shows, um, fun things like this. And, um, yeah, summer camps, 12 different science themes. All right. For more information hey. on Mad Science of Austin and San Antonio, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just scan that QR code on your screen. Hey, tomorrow on SA Live, we dive into the sweet and sour flavors of chamoy, and we find out what it takes to get the recipe just right for this popular San Antonio snack. And this local business makes a hat for every occasion. Keep that South Texas sun off you with a hat that you help create and personalize. That's all tomorrow, 1 p.m., right here on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio with us on YouTube. Yeah, all of your favorite DIY videos, food, drinks, tips, and tricks. If you've seen it here, it's on the SA Live YouTube channel. Just search KSAT SA Live on YouTube and like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ah, yes, the age old question dogs versus cats. Well, it looks like a lot of our viewers happen to be dog people, 63% to 37%, so just about a two to one margin. I wonder what the cat people have to say about that. They're all cute and lovable though. We thank you for watching. Don't forget tomorrow, we've got a whole lot more at one o'clock. Right now we're gonna leave you with some of the pretty pictures and cute pictures of all the uh, little pups and I assume some kittens in there as well. My buddy loves his donuts, who doesn't? Yes, thank you, Jacob. A pug and a Yorkie walk into a bar. Sounds like a start to a joke right there. They are inseparable buddies. Thank you, Lydia. And look at that one all dressed up. We'll see you tomorrow.